And we're here today at the stand of Raytheon Technologies with Paul Ferraro, president of Air Power, Raytheon Missiles and Defense. Hi, Paul. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fine, thank you. So how is it being back here at the Farnborough? Oh, it's wonderful to be back. It's great to see everybody, get to, get to see everybody in person and just to feel the energy that everybody has. And the heat. And the heat is warming up out there today, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely, but we're here, we're in a nice air condition, so um, let's discuss about the Stormbreaker. So what, does, uh, what makes the Stormbreaker a smart weapon? Well, it's a network-enabled weapon, and it's truly the most advanced glide weapon in our munition and inventory today. Uh, it's specifically designed to, be, to fit on the F-35, as well as a number of other platforms, and is designed to work in all weather conditions against both fixed and moving targets on maritime and ground-based applications. Uh, so could you put the uh, Stormbreaker into context for me uh, in the, in the um, theater of operations? What does this bring to um, warfighters out there? Well, the warfighter have a tremendous advantage to use this weapon, again, against fixed and mobile targets in all weather conditions. Obscured weather conditions as well as clear weather, it uses a very advanced, what we call a tried-mode seeker. Three modes in the, in the seeker that uses millimeter wave radar, infrared imaging systems, and a semi-active laser to find and designate a target. And it uses a semi-autonomous method to detect the target itself, to classify the target, and choose the proper target to engage. And so, you know, what have been the latest uh, milestones for the Stormbreaker? Well, as of September of 2020, this weapon has been fielded on the F-15E by Air Combat Command and the U.S. Air Force. Upcoming, we've gone through a number of test events that have worked our way toward proving out the capability and fielding on the F-18 that is scheduled for later this year. And then going into next year, we'll be fielding on the F-35B and then late, later in the year, the A and C platforms. Okay, so, you know, you've got quite a busy schedule. We do. Um, anything in specific for the next six months that we should be looking out for? We're looking toward the fielding of the weapon on, the, on these key platforms mm -hmm. and then making this available to not only the U.S. domestic customer, but certainly the international community as well. Oh, now, there you go. I was going to, <laughs> as a good old journalist, I was going to ask you the question. You know, F-35, there are quite a few customers. Are you allowed to talk about a few of the non-U.S. customers? I am. So this is a threshold platform on the F-35, so many of our F-35 customers will be looking for this weapon system over the next handful of years as we field it on the 35, make it available to them, and we're looking forward to being able to do so. And I'm pretty sure they're looking forward to being able to use it. I'm sure they are. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Paul, for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you, and have a wonderful show. You as well. Thank you very much.